All right, so we have our two maps. I always save these as PSDs first. That way I can get back to all the layers. Okay, and then I'm going to save them as TGAs. All right, let's go back to Blender. We can hide all our high geometry and we need all our low geometry. I need to produce a couple materials here. So in my materials tab, I'm gonna get rid of all my materials that are located in here. A lot of them like to hang out. You can see that. Good. And I'm going to produce just one material. We'll call this Bane Thrall. Now, depending if there's going to be one set or not, I'm just going to put Bane Thrall 1. And here, I'm just going to make a couple textures. I have label these textures. This is my color map. This one's going to be my normal map. Okay, down below, I need to go to image or movie. This is my nor no, my color map, so I'm going to go get my color map. They're TGAs, so I know which ones they are. That's why I separate pings from TGAs. Okay, good. These need to be on UVs. And they need to be in the color channel. Good. Also, I need to take the specularity down quite a bit on this because I don't have a specular map yet. Okay, my normal map needs to be put in place. So that's going to be an image or movie. Can open the normal map. It's going to be image sampling based upon normal map. It's going to be on UVs, and I'm going to choose normal. All right, now I have my base material. I could take this and go into the edit mode of each one of these items, highlight all the faces, and hit assign. Another thing I like to do is click on F. This will save this material and basically I can get rid of all the other materials, save this document, okay, so it's a Bane Thrall 1 or 4, and this is in the armor example. I'm just going to reopen this. And look what that did. It cleaned out all the extra materials. So that's a great way to get rid of those stupid things. F saves it no matter who the user is. Okay, N on the keyboard. Let's go in here. We're going to go to display and we're going to go to GLS. Okay, over here we're going to choose textured. And then I need a light. I need a light to be a Hemi. So I'm going to go lamp. And there's already a light in here, but I'm going to choose a Hemi light for it. Okay, now if I can look make things look good under Hemi features, 
it'll look good in all features. It's kind of like painting not so flat. It's not a flat light, but it is by far one of the brightest lights. Okay, now that lamp is somewhere in here. I just got to find it. There it is. And I need to rotate this. Okay, so it's really hard to see the normal maps right now with Hemi. Hemi is to straighten out the color map. If we want to see the normal map and how good it's looking, first I turn off all these wires and then I'll produce one more light. I'll add a point light into the situation. Okay. We could take the Hemi and turn it down if we want. That's located under light and energy. You can just turn its energy down. Here's my point light. I'll hit W. Get this close to the mesh so we can see these normal maps. Nice. Another thing you could do is kill the color just to see what the normal map is. And that's quite easy to do. I usually do that first with soon. I don't know, I just decided not to do that this time, but I should have. So I can uncheck this and I can look at just the normal map. So here's that normal map in all its glory. Ooh. Okay, let's go over by the gauntlet with this light. You can see all the detail. Now the thing is, we don't want to kill all this detail with a too dark of a color. If I click this back on, as far as the texture is concerned, it should look really nice with this on. And you can see that because I brighten this one up a little bit more, it looks good. But I would say the other one, not so good. Kind of boring. So I have to still work on this one. There's going to be a chess piece here and another chess piece covering this up. So a lot of this stuff is all going to be cut up or not showing anyway. But still, I like to kind of put detail in areas that you can't even see. I'm not going to do that here, but I uh, will suggest that, you know, this brightness channel right here can be used for a great deal of detail. It's not just for taking the edges, but you can take texture brushes and go in here and kind of lighten things up every once in a while. Stay away from the edges when you do stuff like that. Like I'll make a sh I'll make this really, really, really light on one side, and that'll celeb or separate the two forms. So in this case, I went into the front part of it. Again, try to stay away from the edge edge get too close to that and it will not blend well. Also, I would stay away from this leather straps because the leather straps are a different kind of texture altogether. But putting a texture there really looks amazing. So in that case, I usually put that one, any textures within the group. Anytime I'm doing any kind of texture works, it's in the group. These things I usually keep all out so I can kind of adjust them at will. A lot of times I'll just reduce down saturation. I will kind of blow out 
exposure until I'm happy with the color that I picked out. All right, so that's my little workflow anyway. I hope you enjoyed. And what we're going to do now is give you an assignment. <laughs> First off, I just want to see what this color map looks like. This isn't going to look as good until I get the nor or the spectral on it too. So how I do this is just I click on that one and refresh. So I put that white thing on the wrong end. I wanted to put that more in the back. Let's see what that back looks like now. And you can see it's now separated quite well from the front. But since it's non-destructible, I can easily go in here and just darken that up. You can also paste textures in here, incidentally. Alright, so let's go in and look at the assignment in the next video.